Good. Then I'll get a chance to wish him a Merry Christmas as well. You know his feelings about Christmas, Master Tom. I dare say all of London knows his feelings about Christmas, Bob. It's the same each and every year. I'll ask for the day off so that I might spend it with my family. How is your family, Bob? They're quite well. Your loving wife and tiny Tim. As well as can be expected, Master Tom. Why, just the other day, I was carrying Tim on my shoulders. And he he still me. has trouble with his walking, then. <coughs> yes, I'm afraid he does, sir. Bless his soul, he never complains. No, I suppose not. He misses the ice skating with the others. But he is a masterful snowball maker. I venture to say that Tim is the best in all of London. I venture. He's a good lad. Uh, listen, Bob, I uh, have something here. Uh, a taste of Christmas cheer. A fine old cherry. Oh, Master Thomas, please. No, I mustn't. Your uncle would not. Oh, come along, Bob. Uncle wouldn't object to just a little taste. Not this once. It is the season, you know. Mr. Scrooge has very strict rules. I know, but he'll never know the difference. Well, perhaps just this once. Yes. It'll keep out the cold. Now, put some suitable glasses over there. Yes. Probably double up the old man himself to have a dram or two once in a while. <coughs> Here we are. Now, let's do a proper job of it. Here's to the merriest Christmas ever. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> That's better? We'll need another. It's that cold in here. No, please. I, I really mustn't mess This will be the last for now. We'll just say it's for medicinal purposes. Cheers.
But I would wish you a Merry Christmas all the same. And a Happy New Year. Come, Bob. Merry Christmas to us. Merry Christmas to you, Bob. I'm coming, wait for me. Tom Foolery. Wandering about the streets, annoying people with a lot of caterwauling. Same thing every year. And what's this then? Another of my nephew's ideas of a good business practice? It's just a little sherry, sir. Master Tom thought that since it was Christmas Master time. Master Tom? Since when is Master Thomas your employer here? What am I then? The janitor? No, sir. I leave the premises to collect the rents. Upon my return, I find that my celebrant nephew has taken over the business. Not only that, he has decided to abandon protocol in favor of the consumption of alcohol during business practices. Perhaps he thinks this practice will enhance the accuracy of your entries in the ledger. I'm certain that he meant no harm, sir. He only wished he to... Meant no me harm? <sighs> no harm indeed. The only way to perdition is paved with good intentions. <coughs> Many a man has had his pocket picked while kneeling to help another to his feet. The season's greetings to you, gentlemen. <sighs> Permit me to introduce myself. I am Elizabeth Lane of Malcolm, Brigitte, and Lane, at your service. The door, Mrs. Lane. In the door? The door, Mrs. Lane. Close it. Oh, 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 yes, of course. Well, as I was saying, we of Malcolm, Brigitte, and, and Lane. Lane, yes, yes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, do I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Marley or Mr. Scrooge of Scrooge and Marley? You're addressing Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Marley died a year ago. This is Cratchit, my clock. Oh, I see. Do. Yes, well, I have come in behalf of the poor and destitute who are in dire need of our support during the holiday season. <coughs> the harshness of winter exacerbates their condition. Some haven't the basic necessities to sustain life. Many have no homes, food, or clothing. Many have small children who will not survive if we do not open our hearts to help them. Our association will see to it that your donation is put to good use. Now, how much shall I put you down for? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. But, but, but surely, sir. But surely, madam, I said nothing. The reply was in the negative. As in none. In all my days, I, I don't think that I have ever... Ever what? Ever seen a man who was not to be bent by the whining and groveling of the lazy and misbegotten? Or perhaps you have never met a man who refused to carry those who would not walk. Some are unable to walk, sir. So be it. Let me ask you this. Are there no workhouses? Are there no prisons? There are many, and, and filled to overflowing, more is the pity, and many will die there if they do not die in the streets and back alleys. The city is crowded with them. Very well, then. If they are want to die, let them do so, and decrease the surplus of population. But, sir... There are no buts about it, madam. I said nothing, and there's an end to it. Very well, then. Let us hope that you never find yourself in need. Not very likely. For as you can see, we do not waste our money on hopeless causes. Now, if you are quite finished, this enterprise is not run on charity. We have work to be done here, and the hours will be late. I am most sorry for the intrusion, sir. So am I. Good evening, then. And may I wish you a Merry Christmas? Wish me anything you like. Just be done with it. You shouldn't tempt me, sir. What's that? Uh, have you an affliction? What? Uh, good evening, and... A Merry Christmas to you, sir. Merry Christmas. A fine thing. Standing about a place of business, discussing the plight of beggars and vagabonds. Well, I suppose there's nothing to be done for him. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Time, Cratchit. Time. Yes, sir. Tomorrow is Christmas.
Christmas. <coughs> yes, sir, I know. I suppose you'll be walking the day off. If I may, sir. That is, if it's all right. It isn't all right. Yes, sir. It seems to me to be a fine state of affairs. When a man is allowed to pick another's pocket every 25th of December. Yes, sir. You agree with me, then? Oh, oh no, sir. Oh, I mean, yes, sir. Gone I mean, to your head already? Be sure that you're here. But I suppose you ought the whole day, then, don't you? If I may, sir. Would do me little good to have you about after half a day of celebrating. The way my nephew has started you off. I'd be fortunate enough to have you back here next day as it is. Yes, Mr. Scrooge, sir. <laughs> um, Mr. Scrooge, sir, before I leave, may I wish... What's correct? No, nothing, sir. Good night, sir. Humbug.
time for it to become a part of the sky does that as well. How long will it be the brightest star? A little while longer, so. I wish it would stay forever. We'll always be there, Tim. Perhaps not as bright as this night, but it will always <coughs> be there. Papa? Yes? Can we make a wish on the star? Of course you can. Would that wish be, my tiny Tim? I would wish every boy and every father just like mom. My, that's a compliment. I'm not then sure. Then we could be as happy as I am. Wouldn't that be fine? Oh, oh yes, Tim. That would be just fine. Now you make a wish. Of course. What do you wish for? Would wish? Yes, Papa? I would wish that every father would have a son just like Get going before your mother has to come to look for us. Come on, that's a big boy. Up you go.
But Jacob, we were we were only men of business. Business? Welfare of mankind should have been our business. Charity and understanding should have been our business. The future of the world should have been our business. But, but Jacob, one one must make a living. A living? By draining the life's <coughs> blood from others. But Jacob, there is not a record within our business history that reflects anything other than accepted protocol. Business history protocol. Is that what you would have then? That history should go on repeating itself? Would you leave a path of broken lives as a roadway for your successors? But Jacob, I believe in, in sound business practices. Sound business practices? Do you believe in what you see before you? I see before me an apparition. An apparition? <clears throat> in the midst of a nightmare, and, and dozing, and, and you, you're a glot of mustard, you, you're a bit of undigested beef. Ha! My nephew Sherry, that's what you are. Oh! 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 Please, please, Jacob, Jacob, spare me. Spare me. Silence. <coughs> Silence, Ebenezer. Yes, Jacob. Do you believe in me or not? Oh, yes, yes, Jacob, I Can believe. Can you hear me, Ebenezer?
has come before, the spirit of memory and recall. Are you the, are you the first of the spirits then to be visited by this night? I am. Your, your coming has been foretold to me. It has. Yes, and, and of the others, there are to follow. Each in their turn, oh. Ebenezer. <laughs> I come to lift the veil, the veil that cloaks your mind. You need not fear me. I will not harm you. I come to show oh. you what has already transpired. I come to show you yourself in an earlier time. A time when life was new and exciting to a young friend. Come along, Ebenezer. Keeping the ledgers is done for the day. I'm not your father won't have the faintest idea of the day's receipts. Fiddlesticks. The accounting can wait. Christmas comes but once a year. The wrinkle won't dry up before tomorrow. She's right, you know. Besides, one should never argue with the proprietor's daughter. The trouble with you, Adam, now, is that you are always ready to take a long day. Well, all work and no play, as they say. Oh, Jack, 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 Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, oh, we'll toast anything to 
kindest man I ever knew. And his daughter? Lydia. Yes? The fairest of the fair. She cared for you? Oh, she did, Spirit. She did. And you for her? Oh, I did care for her, Spirit. I did. Look there, Ebenezer. <coughs> oh, she was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. Her eyes were like a cloudless sky. She walked through my life like a silken dove. Do you remember this night, Ebenezer? Oh. Oh, yes. Listen carefully. Oh, I'm not sure. Listen. But you must, Lydia. You must give me more time. I am still an apprentice. There is much I still must do. But Ebenezer, your apprenticeship will be ending in the spring. I happen to know that Father is extremely fond of you. I know. But being fond of me is no guarantee he will take me into his employ. Ebenezer, he knows your fine accountant as well. Don't be silly. I happen to know he has plans for you. But Lydia Abernathy and the others will say that I am married into the business. For heaven's sake, Ebenezer, they know your qualifications. They know your work. Besides, they aren't that sort. They've known you were in love from the very first. Still, it does not seem right to me. Kiss me, Ebenezer. Tell me that you love me as I love you. Here. Now. What about the others and your parents? Whichever would they think? It's Christmas, <coughs> Ebenezer. It's a time for new beginnings. A time for celebration. To proclaim our love. Give me in your arms and kiss me for the whole of the world to see. Please, Lydia, I cannot. Cannot? Or will not? Lydia. What is it, Ebenezer? If I'm mistaken about your feelings for me, but let me make a fool of me. No. No, my dearest love. My dearest love? How can you say that to me? No. My dear, it's Lydia. Why oh, so great a no? Is there something else, Ebenezer? <coughs> Ebenezer, is there someone else? No. My only love, there is no other. Tell me, Ebenezer, why will you not proclaim it here and now? Come, let's tell them all now that we are in love and are to be married. Lydia, wait. Why? You just told me that there is no other. Thank you. 
sister. Is that it then? You love me like a sister? It isn't that. Perhaps you fear you have not been enough women then? Maria, please. What else am I to think? Perhaps you fear you have not had the sufficient opportunity to gather about like other men. I have never been interested in chasing skirts, and you know that. And what is it? We are both still very young. As he has opened my eyes. He has taught me more than my trade. I feel there may be more to my future than to remain here in his employ. The world is at my feet. He has given me wings. Am I not to try them? You will have security here. <coughs> London is proud of the business people, and some are not as concerned with their business practices as they should be. I know that it shall not be easy, but I feel I must give it a try. Very well. We'll be married and go to London. That's just it, Lydia. So that's it, isn't it? You're going to be free of me. But you can go to London. The times are more fashionable. The company more sophisticated. <coughs> it isn't that. It isn't necessary for you to explain yourself any further. It's quite simple. You have made up your mind that there is more for you in London than there is for you here. But I was supposed to have thought differently. After all. You're a qualified clerk now. Who knows what the future holds for you? Why, you may become the proprietor of a large establishment. Who knows? You may even go into business for yourself. Lydia, please. Oh, my God, I found out your true nature was fine. I don't even know you, Ebenezer. I thought... It was obvious I've been wrong about a lot of things. It's wrong to think you cared for me. It's wrong of me to think you loved me. But I do. I do care for you. Care for me. Yes. It's a love effort.
sire. I was young, for we were all so very young. <laughs> Come, Ebenezer. <laughs> it is time that we returned. There is a great deal more in store for you this night. But, but where are we going? We are returning to your rooms. The clock is about to strike, and I must return to my place in your memory. What are these? What are these? 
these spirits, uh, what do they want? Take them away. Take them away? Yes. Away where? Well, I... To the prison? Uh, to the workhouse? Uh, Perhaps they will die and decrease the surplus population. Oh, please. Uh, no. Perfectly logical solution. Merely sound business practice. No, no, Spirit. Very well. Oh. One more vision for you, Scrooge. One more glimpse into that world from which you have long since cut yourself off. Come with me, Ebenezer.
I have seen this night. It is you. I knew that it would come to this. I knew that you would appear before me. Days long past and days close at hand. And now, <laughs> the days that are to come. Oh, please, <laughs> please, it is you, it is you that I fear the most. <laughs> yes, 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 Spirit. I am doing, I am doing as I am told. <coughs> Oh, I have to attend, I must be fed. Oh, 
graveyard and and, and not, not a soul to mark this passing, not a, not a single tear. And forced to bear the sting of grasping fingers tearing away at what few possessions is carried to his rest. And here, in this forgotten corner. Please, please, no, Spirit. I, I know what must be written there. Please, Spirit, please, do not make me look upon the face of the stone. Please, Spirit. Spirit, before, before I look upon what I know must be written there, please tell me, tell me that it can be changed. Tell me that, tell me that it need not be so. Spirit. Oh, Spirit. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. No. It is, it is my grave. <coughs> oh, Spirit, please. Is this where it is to end of all the days that I have been upon this earth? Here in this forsaken corner. Mourned by no one and forced to bear that horrible, horrible. Spirit, please. Spirit! Spirit! Spirit, please tell me. Tell me that, that this can be changed. Tell me that you have the power to change this. Please, Spirit. Please, Spirit. Tell me that you can expunge the writing from this stone, please, Spirit. Oh, please, Spirit. <laughs> Be quick about it. And yes, I shall 
give you a pound note. A pound note, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, a most appealing boy, such an intelligent boy. Oh, 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 now. Now it's I must clean myself up.
was so unusual about it? Well, the strangest thing happened, sir. Just as my wife was about to prepare our Christmas dinner, there was a knock at the door. Hmm. So, ragamuffin expecting a hand on, I suppose. Oh, oh, no, sir. It was the delivery man from Hardwick's butcher shop. <clears throat> Has Hardwick's gone into charity work then? No. His man told us that someone had purchased his prize Christmas goose and wanted it sent to us. I told him he must have been mistaken, but he assured me that the gift was from a person or a person's who wished to remain anonymous. Anonymous <coughs> indeed. And that was not all, sir. There were gifts from the finest shops, clothing and toys for Tiny Tim, fruits and vegetables, and, sir, the most marvelous Christmas pudding. A bottle of the finest brandy and sherry, too. It was incredible. That's, sounds as if someone had lost his mind. Forgive me, sir. It's such a surprise we could hardly speak. Absolutely struck dumb, eh, Cratchit? Yes, sir. It was the most marvelous Christmas ever. It was? Yes, sir. I see. It was sent by someone who has lost their mind. <coughs> God bless them. Just the same. Perhaps by someone who has found it. Pardon, sir? <coughs> <coughs> Confound it! Gretchen, I say. Confound it! Is there no work to be done here? Have you decided to jeopardize your situation? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. <coughs> Hold on. And speaking of your present situation, I've been considering your salary. My salary, sir? Yes. Your salary. <coughs> How long have you been in my employ? I've been with yourself and Mr. Marley for 11 years ago in February, sir. <coughs> 11 years ago in February? Yes, sir. Indeed. Well, uh, <coughs> Would you say that these past 10 years and nearly 10 months have been spent profitably? Oh, yes, sir. And, and have you gained in your knowledge during your time invested here at Scrooge and Marley? Most certainly, sir. And would you say that uh, you are now in a position to seek employment elsewhere? Mr. Scrooge, I don't, I don't understand, sir. Well, <coughs> One must never become so subject to routine that he overlooks his own potential. But I'm content with my position, sir. <coughs> well, when I was a young man, I had the opportunity to spread my wings, to venture out on my own. And I, I could have remained where I was, secure within the company. But I decided to change that, and I left a great deal behind to venture out, to venture out on my own. But Mr. Scrooge, I assure you, I'm quite content to remain right here. Well, <clears throat> you may be content to remain here, but I have something to the contrary in mind. To the contrary, sir? Yes, to the contrary. Pressure. I will no longer have you as my employee. But, but, Mr. Scrooge, sir, I've spent nearly 11 years at Scrooge and Marley. You said so yourself. Exactly. Therefore, I am terminating your position as employee. And I am asking you to become my full partner.
please say that you will remain here with me as my partner. I'm sorry, sir. Forgive me, I'm a, I'm a bit overwhelmed, sir. Just that I'd always hoped that you would keep me on, that I could stay with the firm. When Mr. Marley died, I had no idea what was going to happen. I never dreamed that you would consider me qualified to be your partner. Bob, Bob, you are more than qualified. <coughs> you, you have been a much needed colleague. You, you have been a friend, patient and enduring friend. Mr. Scrooge, I would be honored, sir. Uh, call me Ebenezer. Ebenezer? <laughs> I, I know, it, it will sound strange at first, but, but, but you'll get used to it. It took me a while as well, believe me. <laughs> Let's have your hand on it. Hmm. Now, what sounds better to you? Scrooge and Cratchit. Or Cratchit and Scrooge. Well, my George, <coughs> I had never thought it possible. But I suppose it's all true. You are truly an amazing man, Uncle. Thomas, my boy. Now let me see. Could it be that in the middle of our party, when there came a knock upon the door, that the delivery persons with their arms to overflowing were sent by the same uncle that resides here in these dingy rooms. Nay, nay, I said, never in a thousand years. Gifts from a skinflint such as he, never. But I was wrong. Wrong as ever I could be. Why, there were gifts for all. Feast and finery alike. I have never seen such plenty. The food and the wine. Oh, Uncle, the wine. My, my. Merry Christmas, nephew. Oh, Uncle, you don't know what this means to me. I, I can only say that this is the very best of all possible Christmas gifts. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Oh, and God bless you. Thank you, my boy. And Bob, Bob, a Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, Master Tom. Excuse me, but... Mr. Cratchit might be a more appropriate manner in which to address my new partner. <laughs> new partner? Well, by Jove, it is a special Christmas. <laughs> Congratulations, Bob. And it's about time, I might add. <laughs> Thank you, Master Tom. <laughs> well, now that the time for gifts is at hand, I can hardly contain myself. Uncle, I have come to your offices this morning to present a gift, in which I am sure you never would have expected. Now, if you will just stand right here, I will bring it in. Here is my gift to you, my dear Uncle Scrooge. Lydia, this is my only father. Yes, Ebenezer. It's been a long time. Yes. Lydia. How? It's all right, Ebenezer. I'm meaning to write to you. It's been so long. But, but, but I heard, I heard you were married. I'm a widow, Ebenezer. My husband died nearly 15 years ago. A widow? Then. I must confess it. You were the only real love for me. I have never forgotten you. Even now, seeing you. And has it been the same for you? Yes, Lydia. There's never been another. Take me in your arms. And shall I kiss you, my silken dove? Here, in front of the others. Here. For all the world to see. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. A time for new beginnings. A time to proclaim our love to the whole of the universe. Come in! Come in, all of you! Thank <laughs> you. 